So, I have to rewrite the script. I'm gonna change the newscast to a radio cast. I'm gonna have Danielle already arriving at the facility, segueing it and using the radio broadcast to get us to the next scene. It will limit our locations. It will get rid of actors and extras. It's pretty efficient. I think it'll work. So originally the script was something like 23 pages. It was basically a pilot. And now it's closer to 13 or 14 pages. We took out every extra. Extras are hugely expensive because you not only have to pay them for the day, but then you have to feed all of those people and that balloons your catering costs. You knocked off 10 extras already, which is a huge number. $1,000 just for them to show up. Another $250 each day just to feed them. He nailed it. I knew he could do it. He kept the creative elements that I loved so much about the script, and he made it much more manageable for a project of this size. Another thing I did was I got rid of the entire family, which were four characters, and then the assistant. So that's five actors you don't have to pay for, which is huge. We also cut out central characters that we don't really see to get our point across in a proof of concept script. Right. That saved me another thousand dollars easily. You also went from seven locations to one central location. When you have to start thinking about budget, eliminate locations, try to find one single location, and you know you can do this in your script. Instead of writing this big script that has all these things you're not gonna be able to really pull off, and then you piece together a bunch of half-done scenes together to get a big half-done movie, that's no good. You might as well just shrink the entire thing and accomplish it really well. I think we've covered pretty much everything we have to get done now. Uh, while I'm working on the production calendar today, I'm gonna go ahead and start assigning tasks to both of us. So let's talk production calendars. Once you know you got a lock script set in stone, that's when you want to start a preliminary production calendar. It is a complete overview of the project from beginning to end, starting with development, moving on to pre-production, production, post-production, post and finally distribution. Studio Binder, it's a great resource that you can not only create your calendar, but you can distribute it to members of your team. I'm gonna go ahead and use a template here because I find that using a pre-scripted template makes it easy, I don't have to fill in the blanks of things that we already know. These steps that are pre-populated in this calendar are essential. Some of the most common goals and milestones you wanna put on your production calendar from the start, your talent casting. Location scouting. You want to find your department heads. So I'm going to go to hire department heads, and I'm going to put it on calendar right now to start that discussion, not only with our director, SC, but with some of the actual crew people that I've worked with before to see if I can get recommendations for people who are willing to work within our budget, which is very, very small, so. So next on our list is a first AD. The first AD, they're the buffer zone between the creative people and the soldiers going out there and doing a lot of the things because you can't have a director telling a grip what to do. I've been on sets where the entire crew hated the director. And it was kind of funny, but at the same time, uh, very uncomfortable. And the productions always, always, always suffered as a consequence. Hello, Carrie. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good, how are you doing? It's Herman, I'm sitting here with SC. And the first and primary goal of the first AD is to support the director's logistical needs to make sure that we get everything we need in the can while we're on set. 
Well, the project that we're doing is not a full, complete pilot. We're doing a proof of concept for a comedy pilot. Cool. One of the things I really wanted to focus on was uh, the performances, and so a lot of the time I'd be, you know, with the actors more so right. than I would be with everyone else. We're definitely going to need a strong first AD, and I was pretty impressed with you, so just wanted to see if you were available, first of all. Yeah, um, I think it just depends on the project. We're looking at doing probably five and a half pages per day. And I just wanted to make We have about two days to get 12 pages in the can, but getting them to work for this rate might be a challenge, and I'm a little nervous there. Um, that's fine. Oh, I was goodness. wondering, I'm like, I feel this might be a smaller one, and so, <laughs> oh. yeah, no, that, that's doable. Oh. <laughs> Thank awesome. you so much, Carrie. We're really excited. Yay! I'm excited. It sounds fun. I'll look for your email. All, All right. Right. Talk Thanks to you. Have a great one. All right. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye. She was nice what and a relief, lovely. Right? No, she's what a relief. Yeah. So Carrie's in, which I'm super excited about because she has experience, she knows what she's doing, and she's gonna bring some expertise that I don't necessarily have, which frankly is the most important thing. So that's a huge weight off our shoulders. Having Carrie on board means our days will go so much more smoothly. The first AD is going to be super important for us because we have such a light crew. We need efficiency, and we're going to be shooting eight pages at least on one of those days. So Absolutely. it's like, so now we have to start thinking about camera. The next order of business, we need a cinematographer. We need a director of photography to get this thing in the can, make it beautiful on a budget. It's honestly one of the big things I'm the most worried about, mainly because it's really important for your production, but also it's a big bite out of your budget. Getting someone's gonna be not the easiest thing in the world, but I was thinking, what about uh, Marvin? Luckily, we have a guy here who's a great director and a good cinematographer. His name's Marvin, he shoots for Studio Binder, he's shot a lot of the videos here. He's someone who we share the same taste cinematically. So it just seemed like a nice natural fit. We need to see if he is willing to come on board and uh, what he will need. In terms of crew and equipment. And camera, yeah. I was excited to see if you would be willing to come on and you know, today will be that discussion. Okay, so the last draft I got was I think like 10, 11 pages yes. in one location. That's still the newest draft. Yes. Herman does have some numbers and things like that that we're working within. So let's talk negotiations when it comes to crew hiring. Let them know the budgets that they have in a round firm number and let them know that it's up to them to decide what to do with that number. What is the absolute maximum budget you have for a camera? $650. $650? Mm -hmm. And that's including lenses? That's including everything. If it were your personal project, how would you realize it given our budget constraints? This is a question of what is the quality level you want to reach. Right. You know, if you want to go like always sunny and shoot a proof of concept on a VHS tape, you can. Guys, guys, you have no idea what just happened. I just met a girl who is amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a dude. That's a man. Are you sure? Yes. But nowadays, people are more used to seeing high quality for low budget because of technical possibilities that they didn't have back in the days. Studio execs, in my opinion, are looking for what are these people capable of doing for what money? Mm -hmm. What happens if we give them 10 times more? One great pro tip for negotiating with your crew is through the use of kit fees. Basically, any fees associated with the tools of any member of your crew that's coming to work that's specific to their position. For your grip and electric department, it could mean a ton of materials, an entire grip truck that you would otherwise have to pay for. You don't have much leverage when you're doing a budget like we have. You let them decide what's important to them. Is it crew or is it equipment? What is your minimum crew need for something like this? It's 11 pages, mm -hmm. it's one location. What I definitely need is an assistant camera. First AC can double dip for the second AC potentially, and a uh, gaffer and potentially a grip, depending on what lighting we talk about. You know, obviously it's also depending on the budget. So Marvin is an awesome DP. I've seen his work. I'm afraid what he wants and what we can afford are two different things. 
telling him, you know, you get 25% of our budget. Do what you can do with it. Figure it out and make it work. We have no choice. Otherwise, we have to find another DP who can. In that, if I was doing the lighting myself, we will not be able to get the setups gotcha. moving quickly Definitely. enough. <clears throat> so, depending on what we shoot on... What I want the most is to know that we can move forward, and I'm not sure at this point I'm confident that we're going to move forward with the team we have. Not because I don't believe in the team, it's just that we've got a deadline and we have to move forward, and if you know the budget's too small for people's needs or desires, it's a bit demoralizing. When you do narrative, you have different layers. If life. I have to do it myself, I'll do it myself. Is to tell a story on a subconscious layer. Hey everyone, do you have a great idea for a film or a television show? Want someone to help you produce it? We're looking for writers and directors for season two. So if you have a script that you want to direct, click the link in the description and submit your project to Studio Binder today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.